Hello and welcome. Like most of us, I have a collection of fly cutters, but only smaller ones. They're good for high speed steel tooling and for use on smaller work pieces. I reckon it's time to make a bigger one. I have a piece of 250mm diameter aluminium and a 32mm NT40 arbor. I also have some 4340 steel that can be used to make cutter blocks. I would like this fly cutter to be adaptable to different insert options and to be reversible. G'day, I'm Steve O and welcome to the Outback Shed. I'm going to use the forge drill for this project and will need to use the standoffs that I made in a previous project but I'll need to make some riser blocks for them as I'll be using the outside jaws. I still have the ER40 collet chuck mounted from a previous build and that looks like an opportunity to take it for a spin. I have some 20mm 2011 aluminium bar stock mounted to make four risers that are 20mm long. I'll just clean up the outside diameter then bore an 8mm counterboard hole to take a cap screw. I've seen others make risers out of cap screws held secure with a lock nut or a clamp block, then dole them in with an indicator. Those are good systems, however I prefer this method as I can simply machine the risers to the size I want without making any adjustments. I'll put a light coat of die chem on each face, then remove the chuck jaws before machining them even. The sound of the cutter is a giveaway for the risers not being even in height. The elevated sound level of a slow-mo confirms this. Even cutting clicks on the final cut show that they are all the same. This is then confirmed by the dial indicator.
After loading the plate into the chuck with some support from the tailstock, it's easy to see how this setup works. I'll face the first side and machine the outer edge that is exposed from the chuck and then run a drill through the center. I've turned the plate around and reapplied a little tailstock pressure, then dialed the chuck in as normal to even the plate. Then it's rinse and repeat for facing and finishing the outer edge. A 29mm drill followed by a boring bar will bring the hole to size. I originally planned to use a 32mm arbor for this project, but after seeing the machine plate I decided to go with a 40mm arbor. Now it's off to the mill to machine some grooves for the cutter blocks. I want this fly cutter to have the ability to run in both directions and for the cutter blocks to be reversed. This will have two benefits. First it will cater for any unforeseen configurations where I might need to approach the cut from the opposite side of the workpiece. And by reversing the cutter blocks in direction of rotation I can significantly reduce the diameter of the cut. There is a downside to that though. The visibility of the insert in the cup will be compromised and that might pose risk. I would need to think pretty hard before using it in that fashion. The slots are 25mm wide and 5mm deep. This allows for multiple possibilities of shop made cutter blocks or converted commercially available tooling. I've machined two slots in each groove to take mounting bolts. I'm going to use 10mm cap screws to secure the blocks. Next, I need to mill slots to take the arbor drive dogs. As the plate is reversible, I'll machine these on both sides of the plate. As this is a large fly cutter, the weight of the cutter block will need to be balanced by a counterweight. To assist in setup, I'm engraving each end and each side of the plate. I can use the DRO to ensure that the start point is the same for each set and to ensure that the tick marks are accurate and consistent. The 1mm tick marks are 5mm long, the 5s are 7 and the 10s are 10mm long. I'm using a high speed steel cutter to do the engraving rather than a diamond point or a drag engraver, as I want a rough surface inside the cut. I also don't have a diamond tool. 
A laser would be great if I had one, but I don't. A quick clean up of the diamond file and they look good. I'll put a small amount of epoxy paint over the engraving and then leave it dry for a day or so. I've mounted in the lathe and I'll clean off the excess with some 1200 sandpaper held with a stick. That looks fine and I'm happy with it. The next job is to make the cutter blocks. I would like to have multiple options of inserts that I commonly use. I plan to use a high rake SEKT insert and the usual TPMN and TPMR inserts. I'll make those blocks a day, but blocks for a TNMG or other inserts and high speed steel can come as later additions to the build. A WNMG block will be nice, but its geometry and having a negative rake means I'll need to do some design work to come up with a solution for that. It's an easy job now to cut the blocks in the bandsaw to get two clamp caps. I made this plate some time ago and it's great for holding small work in the bandsaw. Next is just drill, countersink, tap and re-countersink for the 10mm clamp holes.
I'll set up a block and device with a 15 degree angle plate. A 4mm hole and a 5mm tap is next and this will be used to secure the insert block. It's a simple job then to set the vise to 45 degrees and machine a pocket for the insert. A 10mm square pocket, 3mm deep, secures the insert to the block. Next to cut the clearance for the insert, I've set the vise to 0 degrees again and set the bloke up on a 45 degree angle. The pocket looks off angle but that's just perspective. The pocket is at a 15 degree incline and the camera is not square to the vise. It's now rinse and repeat for the TPMN and TPMR inserts. The clamp caps are brought to size and drilled and countersunk to take mounting screws. I have an offcut to make insert clamps. Again, the small parts are easily held by clamps for use in the bandsaw.
they get a 30 degree chamfer on the front edge, a 5mm hole for the mounting screw and a relief cut in the middle to allow the rear of the clamp to sit in the seat and the front to provide clamping force on the insert. Next, I'll cut some blanks from a piece of mild steel for use as counterweights. The 25mm step is 6mm deep. That's 1mm more than the depth of the slot. This is to ensure that when clamped, they do not mar the engraving. After drilling and tapping, I'll weigh everything. For this to work as planned, each counterweight must be the same weight as its matching cutter block. Taking each one in turn, I can machine them down to the required weight. I'm making them wider than the cutter block so that they will be more compact to the plate, making for clearance between the counterweight and the workpiece. After initial machining, I'll weigh the counterweight, then go back and machine off 1mm and re-weigh it. I can then calculate how much to machine off to bring it to the target weight that I want. Starting with the heaviest first, I'll just sneak up on the target. Back to the scales and the final machining weights can be seen. These scales are accurate to one gram, which means one piece could be nearly half a gram over or nearly half a gram under. So what appears to be equal in the scales may not be so precise. However, for this project, they will be fine. Time to change to a 3 jaw chuck. These standoffs make a great addition to the 4 jaw chuck. I 
I'm not happy with the Arbor clamp that came with the Arbor. I'll machine a new one from an offcut of 4140. It's a simple machining job to bring it to size and then counterbore a 16mm hole through it. I'll run the parts over some emery to take off the sharp edges. Nah, that's too hard. Give me a power file any time. To finish off the main parts I'll blue them. This will also offer some protection against corrosion. I'll clean them up with some detergent and rinse them with acetyl alcohol off camera before putting them into the bluing liquid. A water rinse neutralizes the chemical reaction and a bath of oil seals the finish.
I'll engrave each pair of counterweights to identify which of the cutter blocks they pair with. A laser would be nice, but oh well, I'll just have to use what I have. Using the mill, I'll engrave the clamp caps. Now to assemble the parts. Time to try it out and make some chips. I'll set up a large block of aluminium in the vise. Using the SEKT insert first in a 0.75mm cut at 600 rpm. I'll then take another cut at 0.15mm with the same insert and treat that as a finishing cut.
Next, I'll run a TPMR insert for a 0.15mm cut at the same speed and feed. The finish is very good. Both SEK T-cuts produce a very smooth surface and I'm sure with some tweaking of speeds and feeds I could improve on it. The TPMR produced a nice finish but is slightly grooved and not quite as smooth to the touch, but it's a good finish all the same. Again, fine tuning would likely improve the outcome. A closer look under the microscope shows the differences between the two inserts, but you can form your own conclusions. This has been a demanding build, and I wanted this fly cutter to be versatile and adaptable, and it is. There are future opportunities to make cutter blocks to take other inserts that would further increase the versatility of this tool. As always, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the build and found it of value. If so, please consider subscribing if you haven't already, and give it the thumbs up. Be productive, be creative, but most importantly, be safe in your shed. Catch you next time.